Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Brigadier General Stephen Lightfoot, Director, Capabilities Development Directorate, Combat Development and Integration, welcome to today's retirement ceremony, during which Master Gunner Sergeant Aldridge will be released from active duty and retired after 26 years of faithful and honorable service to his country in the United States Marine Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, we stand for the arrival of the official pardon, invocation, playing of our national anthem, and the rendering of honors. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you now with gratitude that we can celebrate such an auspicious occasion. It's during moments like these that we're reminded of the impact that one Marine can make to promote democracy and to afford the citizens of this nation the ability to pursue happiness and to teach us how to live virtuously. I'm reminded of the reality of President Reagan's words. Some people spend an entire lifetime wondering if they made a difference in the world, but the Marines don't have that problem. Master Gunnery Sergeant Aldridge is no exception to that truth. He refused to merely sit on the sidelines only talking about change. He's a man of action and will certainly leave a lasting legacy. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to be the beneficiaries of his dedicated service. We realize that these moments could never fully offer a sufficient tribute to Master Gunnery Sergeant Aldridge's accomplishments, but I pray that he, these coming moments might provide at least a glimpse of all that he has meant to the Corps and to this nation. I ask that you'll place your blessing upon Master Gunnery Sergeant Aldridge as he comes to the end of this journey. I pray that the next would bring tremendous joy and laughter with his wife Tara and with their family. And I pray that you would be honored and glorified during this time. It's in your holy name I pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now render honors to the retiring officer, Brigadier General Stephen Light, Director, Capabilities Development Director. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Brigadier General Lightfoot. <coughs> hey, thanks, Sergeant. All right, I'm typically someone who likes to, to talk with my hands, so I apologize. I'm gonna have one hand moving around and one hand on the mic so that you can hear what I'm saying. Uh, right off the bat, I just wanna welcome our Korean War veterans, I've chosen a few, I just wanna say thanks. I think there, there's a few out in the crowd here. Can you put your, thank you, sir, thank you. Uh, thank you for the service that you provided to our country, uh, for the Marine Corps, and thank you for taking the time to come here today. Uh, today is a bittersweet day. We're going to retire a Master Gunnery Sergeant, the highest rank you can attain on the enlisted side in the Marine Corps. Uh, and we're going to honor him today. We're going to do our best uh, to do that. So right up front, I just want to thank a few folks for coming here because you just heard the band. 
and the band just sounded fantastic. Thank you for entertaining us on the front side, and you make every ceremony what it is so special, because it just wouldn't be one without you guys, so thank you so much for that. Chaplain, uh, where are you? Okay. I just want to say thanks for that, and you know, the Ronald Reagan uh, quote is one of my favorites. You know? so, so thanks so much. I'm gonna, I now know there's like a, there's a line right here that you don't cross, or, or you get a lot of feedback, a lot. Okay, uh, next I just want to say thanks to the ACE. You know, so I look across and I see the uh, aviation combat element of uh, CDD, and a lot of friendly faces, a lot of familiar faces, so thank you for taking the time to come out here and honor Master Gunnar Sergeant Eldridge. And also just want to say, I know that you've got uh, family and friends, you know, here who are taking the time to honor your 26 years of service to the Marine Corps. So how many folks here, uh, well, before I get to that, let me ask, how many folks here have been to the museum before? How many have not, let me ask, how many haven't been to the museum? That's probably the better way to put that. Okay, well, I'll tell you, this is a really special venue. As everyone knows, Marines are very proud of our heritage, our legacy of fighting. We believe, and there are other folks who believe the same, that the Marine Corps is the finest fighting organization the world has ever seen. And when you go through here, and I hope you actually get the time, take the time while you're here to walk through and see all of it. I am glad, you know, and I am very thankful that Master Gunnar said, thank you for allowing me uh, to be your retired officer. Let me just say it's an honor. Uh, and I would say right here, yes, and I, I know when I said who's been here before, everyone looked up. You want to see these, these are wings. Uh, aviation. Is, is a big part of the Marine Corps. And what you have behind me, and I think we couldn't have a better backdrop for, for what you do uh, and what you've done, is you have a UH-34 Seahorse right here. This was kind of pre-Vietnam and, and in the beginning of Vietnam. This thing is an absolute, and it was an absolute workhorse. And for those that remember piston radial engines, uh, that's what this thing flew with. And if you were flying it, it was because you were flying the heck out of it. it there's nothing automatic. No computers, you know, in this thing. So this thing is tough to fly. This is even older than Presty Old Master Guns Aldrich, who's retiring today. Yeah, so that, that tells you a little something about how old this, this machine is. Uh, then, of course, this went into the CH-46 Frog that we flew for 50 years in the Marine Corps, and then now replaced by the MB-22 tail rotor. So just a little bit of history. And you'll, if you go through it, you're going to see a lot of that. Why does this matter? Uh, well, because that's what Master Gunnery Sergeant Elder uh, has done. You know, a big part of his, uh, about, of his career, and when he joined the Marine Corps in 1998, he became an aircraft rescue firefighting specialist, an ARF specialist. And what do they do? They make sure that when this aircraft is airborne, it has someone able to respond when things don't go right. And that's what we need. We need folks to make sure that, A, we gotta make sure we can fly these things safely, but when something happens, and inevitably, it's like if you're riding a motorcycle, it's not if it's when something's gonna go wrong. When an aircraft has a problem, you have to have someone who's there able to put the fire out and pull folks from the right And I will tell you, as someone who's uh, flown in training and combat, um, I have seen our crash fire rescue specialists put fires out and pull pilots and air crew from the wreckage, so absolute heroes. So I just wanna say, Thank you up front for everything that you've done in 26 years. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. I asked a little earlier, who, who is for the first time seeing a, a retirement, a military retirement? Anyone? Okay, so I, I got one, one more over here. So here's the way this is going to go today. I am going to do my best to honor Master Guns Aldrich for the things that he has done. Then we're going to present him with an award a well-deserved award that's going to try to encapsulate 26 years of service in the Marine Corps. And when you think about that, there's probably less than 26 lines of text in there that we're gonna read through. So if you interpret that, that's less than one line for every year of service. So there's no way that we can actually do it justice, but we're gonna do what we can and it's the right thing to do. So we're gonna present him an award. Then, his retirement certificate, then, flag, then we're also going to present a bunch of certificates from very important people, and I think it's appropriate to say that, because I would say that the President of the United States is a pretty important person, we think that the Commandant of the Marine Corps is an important person, and we think that uh, the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps 
is important. And then as I was looking at your certificates, uh, a former POTUS who you served with. You know, so uh, you're going to hear all these folks who want to associate their good name with Master Gunnery Sergeants, uh, 26 years of honorable and faithful service. So that's what we're going to do. Then we're also going to honor you, Tara. We're going to get you up here, and we're going to honor you and make you feel a little embarrassed, and that's okay. Uh, but this is a special day for the, for the both of you, and we want to do that. Then, after all of that, is when I'm going to say congratulations, and I'm going to turn the microphone over to Master Gunnery Sergeant Alfred for everything that he's done, and you'll have your chance to make some remarks. So, let me just talk a little bit about Master Gunnery Sergeant Aldridge. We talked about joining in 1998, you know, so 26 years ago. If you do the math, he's actually going to go on terminal, and it will, be, it will actually be 26 years. So just in case you're wondering math for Marines, am I getting it wrong or am I getting it right? Did the math. Looked it up. Uh, so what I want to, I'm not going to go through his whole bio, and, and he's got a fantastic bio. If you read through it, you'll see the amazing, and even that doesn't encapsulate absolutely everything. But I want to walk you around the below uh, for a second. So he joins becomes an aircraft rescue firefighting uh, specialist and immediately gets deployed, as in like has to get stationed, over to Japan. So the MCA is Iwakuni in Japan. Or actually it's the temple, it's the temple. So in Okinawa, prefecture in Japan. So he serves there and he's a, a firefighting specialist, but at the same time, they realize this kid can shoot in boot camp. So he comes over and he becomes a marksman, I'm uh, sorry, really expert, he's a double E. You can't see it in the uniform that we're wearing today, but he's a double E, meaning he's expert, expert in the rifle and the pistol, meaning you can't get better than that. And that's what he was right out of that. So they said, hey, you're gonna become a, uh, one of our marksman instructors as well. And then also, and I talked about, you know, flying and being able to put fires out, but if you can do both, why not do both? So then he said, hey, you know what? We fly C-12s, which is one of the aircraft that we fly in the Marine Corps, and he, and he flew C-12s. Not only does he put out fires, but he's not afraid to fly in the aircraft that he might have to put the fire out on at some point. So that's, that's in Japan. And from there, he says, well, I'm doing a pretty good job here, and he does. And what do we do after your first enlistment when you're doing a good job? You say, hey, you gotta go do a B-Bill. So he gets selected to go to Marine Security Guard Detachment. And we only select our best for that because it's independent duty. It's extremely challenging. You've got to be someone who can think on your feet. You're protecting embassies. You're actually a statesman. Like you are representing not just the Marine Corps, but you are representing the United States of America when you're in a foreign country. And for those that are unfamiliar, you usually do a couple of countries. And they kind of start off with the one that's a little more uh, less known. And then you kind of graduate to the one that's a little more, that's a little more known. And that's to ensure that uh, you don't try to stay in one spot. So the very first one, uh, he goes from Japan and gets stationed in Uruguay. Uh, for those, and I know everyone knows exactly where Uruguay is because it's, you know, everyone knows that, you learn that in geography. But it's sandwiched on the South Atlantic coast of South America between Brazil and Argentina. And that's the first place that he goes and he serves as representing the Marine Corps of the United States. After, after that tour, he does a great job. They say, okay, uh, now you get to go to the place that's a little more known and you might have heard of a place called Moscow in, uh, in, in Russia. You know, so he goes and he serves in, in Moscow. And trust me, that's a coveted place. I can't imagine that uh, anyone else wanted to go there and you just got lucky, right? No, it's because of performance. When you're good, you get selected for the, for the good village as well. So he goes and he serves in Moscow. But he's like, well, you know, I went from Japan to the Southern Hemisphere, back to the Northern Hemisphere in Moscow, and he's got a whole bunch of tales on that one, which, which are cool. But he says, you know what, it's time to go back to North America. So he goes to the West Coast and is serving at Camp Pendleton in uh, Marine Wing Support Squadron. And that's where, that's where a lot of our firefighting capabilities reside within the wing. So now he's serving at 3rd Marine Aircraft Wing. Previously, it was 1st Marine Aircraft Wing in Japan. Now he's at Camp Pendleton. But also, what do we have going on at this time? We've got combat. We've got OIF going. So he's in a unit that gets deployed. He, he deploys over to OIF in Iraq. So now he's in Southwest Asia. He's bouncing around a little bit. So now he's in Southwest Asia, and he's making sure that, hey, aircraft are, are safe and, and, and able to fly, and we're gonna keep pilots alive and crew alive. Comes back from combat, goes back to the, to the uh, West Coast at Camp Pendleton, and from there, begins his trek across the United States. Again, there is a trend here. You don't make master guns unless you're darn good at what you do. So there's a trend. He's at Camp Pendleton. He's doing a fantastic job. 
of, uh, of protecting these aircraft. And so what does he get selected for? To be an instructor. So from there, from Camp Pendleton, he needs to go to Goodland, or Goodfellow, uh, Goodfellow, Texas, which I'm sure everyone's been there. Uh, but it's right in the middle of Texas, and at least a three-hour drive to a three-hour drive from every major city uh, that, that's, in, uh, that's in Texas. But it goes there to be the instructor, uh, one of the instructors, because when you're good, you instruct. When he finishes up that tour, it's a joint tour uh, at an Air Force base. He comes back over, continuing his trek across the uh, United States, and continues to the East Coast. Uh, and get stationed at uh, Cherry Point and New River. Uh, and that's where our second Marine aircraft line is, because you know, he's only served in first and third, may as well go to second, right? So now it's time to go, and we only have three wings in the Marine Corps, you know, on active components, so it's time to go serve in all of them. So he goes over to second Marine aircraft wing and serves there. And not only does he serve there, but he serves as the OIC, and you might be thinking I'm missing something when I say OIC as a Master Sergeant at the time, but I'm not, I mean that, uh, because Usually you have an OIC and a staff NCOIC. But because the, there was no OIC, uh, he served as the, as the OIC, uh, as the officer in charge you know, for, for that unit. And I'll tell you, as someone who has seen this before, you don't even consider that unless you have someone who is just remarkably capable. You just wouldn't do that. You would say, hey, we gotta find someone, we gotta bring someone over here, this is too important. But when you have someone who is remarkably capable, and you say, you know what, I think this unit is going to be fine under the leadership and tutelage, you know, this Marine right here. And so, Master Arnold, we just thank you for that, you know, for serving in two billets at once as the OIC and the staff and CIC. So from there, he says, uh, hey, you know what, it's time to deploy again, get selected for Special Purpose MAGTAP Africa. You know, there's a trend here, this guy's going all over the place. So he goes to Africa, and then comes back, and now, I think that's pretty much all the continents, except for Australia and Antarctica. So you pretty much have on your bucket list, I hope, have you been to Australia yet? It's on the list. And then Antarctica, I think just soon after, so you got all the continents, you got you to hit them all. Uh, but after a successful tour at, uh, at New River, uh, he comes back up, and what happens when you, when, you, when you get selected for Master Gunnery Sergeant, and there's only six Master Gunnery Sergeants in this field, across the Marine Corps. Only six. He's one of them, and he goes and serves in that, in that billet where you write the requirements for what is the future of this of firefighting in the Marine Corps? What is it going to be for aircraft recovery and rescue? And that's and that's where he ended, you know, and that's the top of the food chain, I'll just say that. There are 1,100 Master Gunnery Sergeants in the Marine Corps. And you might think that sounds like a lot, but let's compare that to the number of Marines that we have in the Marine Corps. You know, 170, roughly 175,000 Marines in the Marine Corps. And you do math for Marines in public, 1,100 is less than 1% of that. So less than 1% of our Marines ultimately make it to Master Gunnery Sergeant, and he is serving in that top billet in the Marine Corps of Master Gunnery Sergeants in his 7051 Aircraft Rescue Firefighting Specialist on the So congratulations, and thank you for all the expertise that you've given to the Marine Corps and have given back, and I know that there, you know, Master Sergeant Cradle just said, you were one of his mentors, and I know he's not the only one. There are a lot of Marines out there that have felt your mentorship and they are carrying on the legacy of our Marine Corps and professionalism that you have brought. So I just want to say thank you in front of everyone for that. Before I hand the mic over and we, be, and we begin the, all the certificates and all the things that go along with that, uh, the last thing I want to say is um, I know that you are ready. You are ready for the next chapter. Here's someone, if you look at his bio, you'll see at the end there, highly educated. And here's, a, here's an individual who could do absolutely anything he wants to do. I won't go through all the education, but I will say, you got an MBA. And if you have an MBA, there, you got a lot of options. you got choices that you can do. But, and you can probably make a lot more money. And I know that. You know that. Uh, but he's a patriot. He's good at what he does. He mentors folks. He leaves the Marine Corps a better place by choice. And so thank you for that. And as I talked to him, I said, what are you going to do? And I was kind of expecting to hear him say, I'm going to go work for SpaceX. And I'm going to make millions of dollars. You know? But he said, actually, I love what I do. And I look forward to coming back to headquarters Marine Corps as a civilian this time. So a little different uniform. But he wants to continue the work that he's been doing. Because we have, there's a lot of work to be done. And he's going to come back and serve in that capacity. So again, thank you for continuing. We don't want to lose any of that 26 years of expertise. Uh, in the Marine Corps, and the fact that you're willing to come back when I know you can do other things, it really means a lot, I think, to everyone, you know. 
And then finally, I just, when I asked him, uh, when we were sitting down and just kind of doing an outbrief of, of thank you, you know, for 26 years in the Marine Corps, especially uh, your final destination here in CD and I, Combat Development and Integration. I just said, where was your favorite, uh, where was your favorite duty station? You know, and as one might imagine, if you don't know the story already, uh, it was Moscow. And why was it Moscow? Because it's where he met his lovely wife, Turner. And if he hasn't told you the story, you need to drag it out of him. But how he met his wife at Catherine the Great Palace in Moscow, where they're celebrating a tournament uh, that, that had completed, and it's broom ball, right? Where you run around, or I shouldn't even say run, but it's on ice, except you're not wearing ice skates, you're wearing shoes, and you got a broom, and there's ball, and you got a score. And what it boils down to is, someone was really good and got second place, Tara. And someone was really not good and did not get second place, Master Guns all your That's all I'm going to say about that. You can get the details, you know, from Master Guns, you know, this evening, you know, over a beer, and he'll probably tell a different version of that story, but don't believe it. Okay. So with that, let's go ahead and continue on with the award and make this this From the Commandant of the Marine Corps, the President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting the Legion of Merit to Master Gunner Sergeant Kenneth G. Aldridge, United States Marine Corps, for services as set forth in the following citation. For exceptionally meritorious conduct in the performance of outstanding service while serving as Deputy Expeditionary Airfield and Emergency Services Capability Integration Officer, Marine Air Command and Control Integration Branch, Aviation Combat Element Division, Capabilities Development Director, Combat Development and Integration, Quantico, Virginia, from April 2021 to November 2023. During this time, Master Grand Sergeant Aldridge demonstrated outstanding leadership and management as the Marine Corps Service Lead for Expeditionary Airfield and Expeditionary Fire and Rescue Capability Requirements. Serving as the Principal Architect for six requirement memorandums and one Capabilities Development document used to establish, validate, and transfer equipment needs to acquisition professionals. Managing Marine Corps programming codes, totaling over $127 million of assets, and was responsible for maintaining an expeditionary firefighting and rescue program that standardized 260 pieces of equipment, ultimately saving $10 million. His leadership and diligence for the modernization of marine aviation have been without equal, and he has made lasting contributions to the aviation ground support community by enhancing vital expeditionary enablers. Master Gunshot Aldridge's superior performance of duties culminated his 26 years of honorable and dedicated military service. Master Gunshot Aldridge's exceptional ability, initiative, and total dedication to duty reflected credit upon him and were in keeping with the highest traditions of the Marine Corps and the United States Naval Service. For the President, Eric M. Smith, Commandant of the Marine Corps. The official retirement orders from the 38th Commandant of the Marine Corps to Master Gernshardt Aldridge. The United States Marine Corps, Master Gernshardt Kenneth G. Aldridge was transferred this date from the United States Marine Corps to the Fleet Corps Reserve after 26 years of honorable and faithful service. 1 March 2024, Washington, D.C. Signed, D.H. Berger, 38th Commandant of the Marine Corps.
A flag does now be presented to Master Sergeant Aldridge. This flag of the United States of America was flown on 5 October 2023 in the United States Marine Corps War Memorial in honor of Master Gunner Sergeant Kenneth Aldridge's 26 years of dedicated and faithful service to the United States Marine Corps. A letter from the Commander-in-Chief. Certificate of Appreciation for Service in the Armed Forces of the United States of America to Master Gunner Sergeant Kenneth G. Aldridge, United States Marine Corps. I extend my personal gratitude and the sincere appreciation of a grateful nation to you for your patriotic service to our country. Your bravery and dedication in our armed forces helped protect your fellow Americans during a critical moment in our history and contributed to a world of greater security and growing prosperity. Your devotion to duty, honor and country, in keeping with the long traditions of the finest military in the world, embody the American ideal of selfless service. Our nation owes you an incredible debt. Your commitment and the example you set will inspire future generations to serve with pride and to keep our country secure. You represent the best of our nation, and I join our fellow Americans in saluting your honorable service. I wish you happiness and success in your next chapter. Joseph R. Biden, Jr., Commander-in-Chief. A letter from the Honorable George W. Bush. Dear Ken, thank you for your service in the United States Armed Forces. I am proud to have served as your Commander-in-Chief, and, and I am pleased to join your family, friends, and colleagues in recognizing your career and accomplishments. Throughout history, the dedicated men and women of our military have protected our citizens and preserved the ideals that make our country strong. Their courage and sacrifice have inspired countless people and have helped shape America's character. On behalf of a grateful nation, I thank you for your contributions to our security and to the cause of peace and freedom. Your service, patriotism, and selfless devotion have helped advance the universal hope of liberty at home and around the world. Laura and I send you our best wishes for health and happiness in the years ahead. May God bless you, and may God continue to bless America. Sincerely, George W. Bush. A letter from the 38th Commandant of the Marine Corps. Dear Master Gunner Sergeant Aldridge, the Marine Corps has been your occupation and family for many years past, and I am certain the memories, interests, and the future of the Corps will remain with you forever. Many desire to obtain your accomplished goals, but few can compare to you. You have clearly demonstrated the exceptional leadership qualities and professional contributions we seek of our senior Marines. We are proud, as you must be, of your successful career. As a teacher to young Marines, a source of wise counsel, and as an example of those soldierly virtues we so admire, you have left a mark on the Corps that will remain long after you've left our active ranks. There are many young Marines you have influenced who will carry on the same fine tradition that has always characterized the United States Marine Corps. You have my best wishes for good health and continued success in the years ahead. Semper Fidelis, D.H. Berger, General, United States Marine Corps, 38th Commandant of the Marine Corps. A letter from the 19th Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps. Dear Master Grand Sergeant Aldridge, on the occasion of your retirement, I would like to extend my congratulations and heartfelt thanks for your many years of dedicated service and selfless devotion to our country and Corps. You have made tremendous contributions and sacrifices throughout your Marine Corps career. As you prepare to enter this new chapter of your life, you can look back with immense pride and satisfaction on all that you have accomplished. You have set an example of professionalism and leave a standard of excellence for all Marines who will carry on the legacy of our Corps. My wife Stacy joins me in wishing you continued success in the future. Semper Fidelis, Troy E. Black, 19th Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps.
Mrs. Tara Aldridge is being presented a certificate of appreciation for her steadfast support to her husband and his Marines throughout his career. The United States Marine Corps Certificate of Appreciation presented to Mrs. Tara J. Aldridge on the occasion of the, re the retirement of your husband from active duty. You have earned the Corps' grateful appreciation for your unselfish, faithful, and devoted service. Your unfailing support and understanding helped to make, your, make possible your husband's lasting contributions to a grateful nation. Given under my hand the second day of November, 2023, Brigadier General Stephen J. Lightfoot, Director, Capabilities Development Director. In fact, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna just talk, I'm gonna talk to Tara, but I want you all to hear it as well. So I'm gonna say just at ease, at ease. Uh, so Tara, thank you so much for all the years of support that you provided to your husband, your Marine, uh, because we know that, uh, I think all of us know who are married here, you can't do everything you need to do without support. You know, otherwise, you can, there's long hours, there's deployments, there's going to all the continents. You know, there's a lot of things going on and without support from you, he would not have been able to excel and reach the very top tier of the Marine Corps without your support. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Doug. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Thanks a lot. All right, let's have a hand for these two. Flowers are being presented to Master Grand Sergeant Aldridge's family for their dedicated support to his career.
appointment or something like that. It always seemed the time when Tara had a surgery. Um, but she'd always come in, fly in, uh, take care of the Tara. Um, extended stays is always what like would happen. Um, to my niece. Uh, amazing woman.
Moscow, that the group of us sitting, the four of us standing there, that was during a, a mob demonstration. We had about 20 or 30,000 Russians outside of our embassy. They weren't exactly happy with us, so that was us afterwards when we were done. And uh, make sure to front seat face behind everybody gets a chance to do that. Um, but with that, you know, Moscow was my favorite place because I met Tara, but I also have lifelong friends in there. Um, and they're here. Uh, Randy Borland, he's back there. Uh, he was part of that second squad group. Don't believe the thing he sells you. You can tell him stuff, you know, maybe not on his tax communication. Um, but then in the, the bottom left corner, that's uh, Tara. I finally convinced her to come to Dennis, leave Venezuela, come to California. We got recognized at work, I think like six months later, I said, hey, I'm deploying. And then uh, as soon as I get on a bird, head to the way, her and mom go to Disney. <laughs> so, Disney freak, I didn't know that. At the point of Tyrac, we didn't really do craft food. Uh, we did provisional security time. So we had to change all that stuff in there. So that was the uh, picture of the census that we did out in Portland. Um, it does get cold. Uh, that other picture with the group, that's our watch section. It was snowing, so it snows very Come back into that right side, and uh, that's our wedding. And you can't see it, but uh, there's some Marines out in the backdrop of that wedding that did that sword arch. Uh, one of them was Sergeant Orlando. Now, the chief warrant officer for war, he's sitting right over there. Um, we had a good time there in the block uh, teaching. Um, the other picture in there, the part is that was a DOD account. So you got a picture of us walking back from what we call it the SAM Squad event, combat challenge. We use that to, to raise money, but um, there's a, a Navy one. He's in between us. There's also Todd Harper in there. He was the OIC at the time. You know, we, we go out there and uh, I think we're young. Realize that we're not. Uh, that photo of my dad and I, that, uh, that was the last air race that we did. So, aviation can be really big for you. Um, we love airplanes, we love them fly on. Um, that photo was taken by Greg. And, uh, that was the last time we were able to actually go together and go to the air races. Uh, below that, Sea River. So, touch that was an OIC. I was only successful at the River because I was surrounded by amazing people. Um, and there were a lot of them in this room. John Ruiz was there, uh, Fred O'Mara, uh, John Clark, and Bill Penn Clark. I mean, Fred O'Mara was phenomenal. We were successful because we were a good team. We had a good group there. Um, we were shaped and mentored along the way with, uh, you know, Marines like Bobby Allen, like Greg Van Omer, Pete Morlow. So that's what we were successful at. That's how we won that award. Um, the one with us all dressed up in, uh, in our evening dress, we did a mess night. Now, that's not me receiving the award, that's us being able to, to give one to a good friend and a good mentor. So we were presenting that to, to Bobby Allen. That next picture, that's that's that tough point we were talking about this one, Mag Tech, where we are based out of Stuttgart, Germany. And then uh, every once in a while we fly to Spain, pick up the boss, and then we go down to Djibouti and get tax free for a month and come back up. <laughs> Someone's got to do it. And uh, that photo uh, next to the plane, that's uh, Senator Burks. We picked her up in Kosovo, so that's another tax free place. And, uh, we flew her to Athens, but that's, that's kind of where I got close to leading over to the fourth mob because you quickly find out that that EMR detachment, most of the time it's Marine Corps Reserves. So those two pods, uh, Niles, I don't know if he's here, he said, and uh, Tech Colonel Brutus, they're both reservists. Um, so we just borrowed their plane for six months. Uh, got to go visit Bella Woods, and that photo is Tara and I in the fall last year. And the last photo, it's a little out of sequence, that's us flying away. So I'll get back into flying here shortly. But I wanted to provide that context of what this photo is for. It does a good job of trying to at least unpack the last 26 years. Um, now to you know, what we do here, CD and I was a wake up call in a lot of respects and came up with COVID. We call it discovery learning. Because you learn something new by the time you figure it out, it's time to go. A lot of us retire. Um, but I really believe in water because the way of course design did it, um, you, you open up your aperture tremendously. It's not just about what the EFR arc is, it's how do they enable the rest of the marine. How does that cog fit and make everything else spin? And you get to see that up there. And you get to see the different teams and all the different branches, all the CIOs in the same bucket you are trying to you know, quickly learn this and you're worried about what you do because it's going to impact five years later. You may not see that. Best you can to try and get it right. But 
it's, a, it's an amazing program. We can't do that without the team on the acquisition side. So the Marine Corps Systems Command, we, we get a funding and funding license, and that of course is maintain stuff like that. Um, that's, that was stuff that was laid down and supported, made, and shaped, and built before I got there. There's, there's, there's Marines in this room that helped get all that stuff started. Um, Todd Harper's here. Some of the biggest heavy lifting that I've seen on that thing is also on Mr. Rob Rao. Um, phenomenal guy. Hard worker. I mean, you won't see, you won't meet anybody who's passionate about what they do. So I'm very grateful for that. But there's also a core group of older master guns up here that was getting that started and making this stuff happen. It's when you see Pete Borlo, Greg Vanover, um, who am I leaving out? John McCoy, he was going to be here in the back of the But um, all those guys helped shape and me and helped me. I just try to carry the ball a little bit forward, and I'll leave it a little bit better. Uh, the MOS, our occupational specialty. So in the past, we kind of see we're wearing coveralls. In the future, I'm excited for it. Um, we did uh, a couple things where we worked with the Occupational sponsor. We can see the education level of, of some of these brands that are coming up. We're getting smarter. A lot more brands are coming in. The certifications are coming up, and we're getting better at what we're doing. And I'm excited for the, the brands that are coming future, um, I'd offer that we need to stick with aviation. That's what we're here, that's what we're 7,000 XX, that's what we support. So as long as we're supporting aviation, we have a job, we have relevancy, we don't need to worry about mission creeping or finding it somewhere else. We have a job, let's get really good at that. Um, so in closing on that part, I'm extremely humble for everybody that came out here and made this trip. Um, hopefully I made a Still something from someone else up here. It's been 26 years of adult permit. Um, now I have to grow up. And it's been an amazing ride. A uh, great ride. I'm happy for it. I'm excited for what the future holds, what we're going to do. And uh, the venue itself here, please take the time to tour this museum. Um, it's amazing because not just a great job of telling our story of the Marine Corps, but also the history of our country. And you can see it as you go through each one of these galleries. Happy action. I mean, we're in, we're in the company of heroes. We have the trust of you that are going through this building right now. The docents here, they're phenomenal. Um, and I don't know how many times I've gone through here, but I see and I learned something. So take the time uh, to go through this museum. And also, uh, for those of you joining us later on at the house, you know, let Tara and I know if you need the address. Um, but once again, this, is, uh, this has been great. So thank you for coming out and supporting us. Um, that's all I really have to say. So. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of Anchors Away in the Marines Hymn.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the official ceremony. On behalf of Master Sergeant Aldridge and his family, thank you for attending today's retirement ceremony.